Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Thanks for uh, coming to this talk. Uh, thanks for your interest in mobile communications. This talk is going to be a tour and an overview over a long list of projects that we have been working on under the umbrella of the Osmocom project. So Osmocom means Open Source Mobile Communications. And um, we're working on the low levels of communication. So most people, when they think of mobile communications, or when they think of apps and Android and iOS and all that stuff, but that lives sort of as far as the moon uh, is from the Earth. Uh, that's as far away from what we uh, are looking at when we talk about mobile communications. So in the Osmocom project, um, we look at uh, the entire protocol stack of different mobile communication systems. And uh, we also look at uh, hardware, uh, both proprietary as well as uh, open hardware, for implementing the physical layer of various mobile communication technologies. Um, this all started with uh, GSM, so we started with looking at uh, GSM on the network side as well as on the telephone side, but by now it has moved far beyond GSM, so GSM is only one of the technologies that we work on. So going to the quick overview, um, just one slide about myself. Um, I've mostly been doing uh, um, Linux kernel um, and bootloader development in the past, but for uh, the last five, six years, my focus has shifted into mobile communications. Um, my main interest in computing has always been networking and communications, and also um, security of communication systems. Um, so in a lot of the slides, you will see uh, that there are security consequences or security implications of what Osmocom projects have been doing. Um, and I'm always looking for systems and technologies and protocols um, that nobody else seems to be looking at. Um, and this has led me to RFID, to cordless telephony, to mobile telephony, and other technologies. Um, a couple of slides to sort of introduce this topic. If you've seen some other talks by, my, by me, then the first three or four slides may be the same. My apologies, but uh, I really want to make sure everyone's on the same agenda here. Um, what's so different about working on or working with open source in mobile communication protocols compared to working in internet protocols? Um, so if you want to do any type of research or hacking or experimentation or improvement on TCP IP based protocols or Ethernet based protocols, then all you need is some off the shelf hardware. A random computer that has an Ethernet uh, interface is sufficient. Um, you can start with an open source implementation of the protocol stack, uh, be it in the Linux kernel, the TCP IP stack, or uh, the PSD TCP IP stack, or many other open source implementations. You can use that, you can read that, you can learn from it, you can modify it, you can improve it, you can basically do whatever you want. All you need is an off-the-shelf PC and, and uh, you have your existing open source uh, implementation of the protocol stack. So then you do some testing, and let's say you're in academic world, uh, you, you have some ideas, you implement them, you take some measurements, you write a paper, and you're done. So basically you can focus on the, what you're interested in, which is yeah, working with understanding or improving um, communication problems. Now if you look at that in mobile communications, it's a completely different situation. Um, now, go back a couple of years before we started Osmocom, uh, like 2009, um, and you want to do some research, let's say, on GSM protocols, then um, you will not find any free or open source software implementations of any of the protocols on any of the interfaces. So um, mobile communication networks have many, many, many more interfaces um, than, than you would find in TCP IP networks. Each of those interfaces has a deep stack of various protocols, and not for any of these protocols on any of the interfaces you will find open source implementations. Even in the academic world, there have been very few universities that had a lab that allowed them to do such kind of research, or even something like their own GSM network in a university for teaching or for research purpose. Um, very few. In Germany, I only know two, for example, and given that GSM is a European technology, it's uh, quite surprising. Um, so basically, 
most people turn away at that point because you cannot really base on any of the existing stuff. You have to start from scratch and it's a relatively complex uh, topic. The only other option you have is you partner with a commercial entity that has proprietary implementations of such uh, protocols um, and uh, where you have to sign NDAs and then you cannot really release the results uh, in, in a public way. And that's what we have set out to change. Um, because what many people uh, do not understand correctly is the protocol specifications are available. So um, both in the TCP IP world and in the mobile communication world, all the protocols are specified. So if you want to implement TCP IP, you, you read TCP IP Illustrator, you have a book on the topic, um, you read uh, IETF RFC documents, which you can find on the internet. And for mobile communications, it's the same. These documentations that specify the protocol are all publicly released. You, can, you, you don't have to register anywhere. You don't have to pay some membership fee. You don't have to pay for specs, like IEEE specs. So you just go to the 3GPP website, and you can download all the specifications. Um, and uh, so basically, we wanted to look at security of such protocols. Um, and I found it quite surprising that there are two systems which are completely openly documented. And in one system, the IP world, you can find many implementations in source code. And in the mobile communications, there was nothing like that. Also, one more thought as an input, GSM, and GSM is only one technology for mobile communications, is more than phone calls. So a lot of people think, oh, what's so interesting in listening to other people's phone calls? It's boring, I'm not interested in that. That's not what, what is the focus of our work. But just think about many end-to-end -end applications of GSM, and you will understand that security actually goes far beyond that. So BMW cars, for example, all have a built-in uh, GSM on them um, through which BMW can remotely unlock your car, open the doors, doing that kind of thing. They even do remote firmware updates on of the engine control unit over GSM GPRS. Um, you have burglar alarm systems often use uh, GSM modems to report uh, 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 if somebody breaks into a house or a business. Um, smart metering is uh, increasingly popular, at least in, in uh, Europe and the US. Um, the idea is that your electricity meter and maybe other meters like water meter and heating uh, and so on, those meters are read out remotely um, uh, over wireless uh, links and nobody goes there and actually reads the digits out. Um, and that uh, is often done uh, in the end using uh, GSM modules. There is railway GSM, also called GM GSMR, which is um, not the, the fact that it's called European Train Control System doesn't mean it only exists in Europe. It exists in Australia, it exists in Asian countries. Um, it's, it's a system by which um, trains uh, communicate with whatever is the authority of deciding if a train is permitted to go on a certain track or not permitted to go on a certain track. Again, it's built on GSM technology. So the insecurities that exist in, in GSM will be inherited by such things. And we have vending machines, uh, like uh, uh, machine vending coke or uh, parking tickets or whatnot. Quite often, when the box that contains the coins that people put in the vending machine, when that gets full, they send a message over GSM. Now, if I'm somebody who wants to uh, steal that money, then, well, if I can listen to those messages, I know which exactly is full right now, and which I can uh, uh, go and actually get all the coins. Just saying, um, right? Transaction numbers in electronic banking are often communicated over SMS, and SMS has terrible security. So, many more things uh, that are built on GSM um, than just uh, telephony, and that's just what I wanted to uh, reiterate at the beginning. So, as I mentioned, Osmocom, open source, um, and my apologies for the typo, uh, mobile communications. It's uh, a classic, classic community-driven uh, free software project. Um, uh, we don't have any formal membership. Uh, it's just a loose collection of people with an interest in the topic. Um, we communicate on mailing lists, on IRC. Uh, we use uh, Git as a revision control system. And we have a wiki, like all the usual things that you would expect from free software projects. 
Um, and uh, you can find uh, osmocom.org as the main entry page, which then links to uh, various of the different sub -components. And now I'm going to look at a number of the most important uh, sub-projects within Osmocom. So the first project which we started, which doesn't have Osmo in the name, because actually Osmocom was only started after that project, is called OpenBSC. Um, and it implements uh, functionality that is called a base station controller, uh, which is uh, one of the elements in the BSN network. And it's an open source implementation of this uh, network element. It supports a certain range of uh, BTS uh, models. The BTS is the base station itself, but interface is the radio link, and those are connected to a base station controller called BSC, um, and uh, OpenBSC is an It was initially purely for research and for, uh, for fun, um, but uh, by now actually it's used in production and we have the figure may be outdated, but I know personally in more than 200 installations it's used in production now as a base station controller in uh, ESM networks. The very first test installation that we did looks quite funny, it looks like this. It's actually a tree, we didn't even have a mask for the antenna or something like that. On top of the tree, you can see the gray panel. This is a, a patch antenna, a sector antenna. Um, the red thing is duct tape. Um, cables are going down the trunk, and at the base, we have uh, the BTSs, the, the base transceiver stations, which are connected over cable um, uh, to uh, a Linux PC, which is then running open PC. And, and using this installation, um, we have been running a, a GSM network at what's called the HAR 2009, Hacking at Random 2009, which is a hacker camp in the Netherlands um, uh, that happened at that time. I think we had about 800 or 1,000 phones uh, of people registered and making phone calls, uh, sending, receiving SMS, all in our own GSM network running on top of uh, free software. So the proprietary part at this part still was the base niche, this PTS. Down here is a Siemens device um, with proprietary firmware, so that was still a proprietary element in the chain. But by now we can also replace this with software, so uh, this was 2009, a couple of years ago. So uh, yes, you do this, it's fun. You learn a lot about how this protocol works. Um, you also learn about all the different bugs of different implementations because they're incompatibilities. Um, phone uh, model A behaves different than phone model B, and phone model C again has a different dialect of the protocol. Um, you also see that there are still, I mean, GSM is a very old technology. It was first deployed in 1991. That's um, more than 20 years ago. Um, but still, even today, in new phones that you buy, you can find lots and lots of protocol bugs in the implementation of um, because what we are used to on the internet, that people send malformed messages and that they try to test what happens if, if I get broken data or if somebody sends me intentionally malformed messages, this kind of process or this, uh, this uh, uh, idea has never really been implemented in, in uh, the companies that implement GSM. So uh, you, you, you send a wrong bit to, to up a mobile phone and suddenly parts of it crash or it gets stuck in a strange state. So um, you really see lots and lots and lots of handset bugs when you start to run your own uh, network implementation because, well, even without intentionally doing something wrong, when you implement the protocol to the network side, you're making mistakes. And then you send a message that is not like specified and then suddenly you see uh, phones exposing really, really weird behavior. Um, especially the first couple of generations of the iPhone. Uh, uh, we had lots of people at that camp who came to us, oh, you know, my iPhone is not even working on a real network anymore now. Um, and uh, uh, you have to completely um, reset and reboot it to get out of that. Uh, so what is, can this be used for OpenVC? There's two modes. One is you can run it as a pure base station controller. Um, this is what regular operators prefer to use because they already have their existing core network. And the core network in GSM is composed of uh, the mobile switching center, MSC, visitor location register, home location register, these, all these acronyms here. 
Um, they already have all of that, and if they use OpenBSC in regular BSC mode, they can directly interface to that without making any changes in their network. So this is more used on the operator side. And the other mode that we have is called the NITB, Network in the Box, which uh, uh, companies and individuals use for private uh, small networks. So you basically run one installation of OpenBSC with one or multiple BTSs attached to it. Um, and then you have your private PBX style network with GSM. So basically, um, uh, let's say at that campsite we had 800 uh, mobile phones uh, that people brought with them. We all authorized them in our private GSM network and then they could um, make and receive calls in their private network. Um, independent of any real operators in that area. And such private networks are used well in, in research and education, of course, uh, for teaching, but also in, uh, for example, um, uh, areas where normally you would use walkie-talkie radios or other professional mobile radio systems. So uh, there are, for example, some offshore uh, drilling uh, rigs uh, for drilling for oil in, in the ocean that use uh, OpenBSC now uh, to have a local uh, GSM network so the uh, employees there can make uh, calls and, uh, and talk to each other and coordinate. Also some mining corporations that use that for underground mining. Um, yeah, so uh, many different uh, use cases um, where this can be used. So moving on, um, there are many other uh, uh, projects in Osmocom. There's Osmo S GSM GSM, which extend the GSM network to, um, uh, to packet data capabilities, so you can have GPRS uh, in, in those networks as well as Edge. Um, just skipping uh, some slides, uh, Osmocom DB is the mobile phone side implementation of GSM. So using specific uh, phones, I've shown a PCB down here with the individual components, using uh, specific phones we uh, basically dis discard the original uh, firmware that's there from the vendor and we run our completely own um, uh, firmware from, from operating system to protocol stack uh, to everything on that phone and at that point we can then of course um, also uh, implement the mobile station side and talk to existing networks. So at this point you can send malformed messages to uh, an existing real operator and see how well they deal with uh, malformed messages like that. Um, this is used by a lot of security researchers in the last couple of years. They have found uh, vulnerabilities in network equipment. Um, they have implemented denial of service attacks against GSM networks using Osmo community. So there's a lot of research that is based on this. Um, and it's very cheap, so base station may be a bit expensive, but this phone costs like, you know, uh, 20, 25 US dollars, so most people can afford it in most places of the world. Um, even students, if they want to get practical experience and hands-on uh, with uh, mobile communication protocols, this is a very cheap approach. There's also a software called Osmo BTS, um, which then basically implements the BTS part, which was the proprietary picture that I have shown, using different uh, hardware boards, um, spare you the details. And moving beyond GSM, there are other communication systems where we've done some work. One is we call Osmocom Tetra, which is a software-defined radio implementation of the Tetra uh, radio. Then Tetra is a professional mobile radio system used often by police. Uh, I know, for example, the Taiwan Coast Guard is using this uh, system. Also, uh, lots of airports are using it as uh, uh, radio technology for the ground staff on the airports and so on. And uh, Osmocom Tetra is a, a software uh, implementation for mostly the receive part, the transmit part, is only implemented in partial. And then you can forward all the messages into Wireshark and you can actually decode and analyze the, the, the protocol that's uh, implemented. And on unencrypted networks, of which I have found a lot in Europe, I don't know how it is here, but in Europe there are lots of unencrypted Tetra networks, you can actually extract the speech and you can listen to the radio communication. So, um, uh, that uh, is another interesting project. Um, another one is Osmocom GMR for Geo Mobile Radio, which is uh, basically GSM for satellite telephone. Uh, 
uh, nobody here will have heard DMR before, or DSM for satellites, but most people know the marketing name or the company name, Soraya. Um, and uh, Soraya operates a satellite telephony network that has coverage all over Europe, all over continental Asia, Africa, and uh, um, into, uh, uh, I think, even down to Australia. So Taiwan, Japan, and so on, is definitely covered by Soraya. So using Soraya satellite phones, um, and we have implemented a receive implementation, again, a software defined radio for uh, this system and partial, uh, not complete, but partial Wireshark detector. So again, you can uh, study and learn uh, about the system by looking at protocol traces uh, from uh, Zoraya. And one of the things you will notice, which not many people have known before uh, we uh, start to speak about it, that in a Zoraya phone call, even in the first message that a phone ever sends to the network, it will always include a GPS position on the phone. It's, there's no technical requirement whatsoever why the system needs to know its GPS position, but in the first message, unencrypted, on every communication of the phone with the satellite, there will be a GPS position of the handset. And if you don't have a GPS position, then the handset will not even start to talk to the satellite. So, um, there's really no other uh, use for this feature in the protocol than for intelligence services. There is no other use. It's uh, technically absolutely not necessary. But, uh, yeah, and these kind of things you find out uh, when you start to look into these uh, systems. And the fact that it is unencrypted also means anyone can receive them. So, it's relatively easy to set up a, a, a medical antenna or a satellite dish um, and uh, then receive uh, Soraya communication, not just from your particular area, from a couple of people surrounding you, but from a very large area. So in Germany, we can still receive spot beams that are focused on the center of Africa. We can still receive them with a, a reasonably sized satellite dish. So you can get satellite communication from lots of users in a very large area um, if you tap into uh, uh, this uh, geomobile radio. We also looked at uh, DECT, uh, European Cordless Telephony System. Um, uh, Patrick McCarty, who used to be uh, my team member in the NetFilter uh, IP tables uh, project in Linux kernel, he has taken upon himself to implement DECT inside the Linux kernel. So there's basically a DECT protocol implementation for the kernel now, um, which uh, is hosted at osco.org, and uh, which you can use to implement uh, DECT base station. Um, in case you don't know what DECT is, uh, it's a uh, gorgeous telephone system, also again originally implemented in Europe but used more or less worldwide. Um, by now, for cordless telephony, you know, you attach it to a landline and a cordless phone. Um, that's the uh, system called DECT. Another project is OP25. Um, OP25 is the emergency services uh, radio system that's used in the US primarily, but also some other countries. So similar to Tetra, but completely different technology. Tetra is European, OP25 is American. Um, and uh, with the OP25 project uh, of Osmocom, you can again um, decode those messages, uh, analyze them, decode the speech if it's unencrypted. So pretty much the same. Um, now, the question in the end is, of course, you will need some kind of hardware to receive, actually, the radio signals. It's all nice that you can implement this in software, but how do you get the radio signals into your computer? Um, there are some projects already for, for like, 10 years uh, available, like the USRD um, uh, from Metals Research, but it's, like, $800 up, so not, not a very cheap uh, device. So we were looking into ways how we can enable more people to use this technology. And one such project is our Osmo SDR project, which is a software-defined radio open hardware project. Um, it's unfortunately still not finished. Um, we have too many projects at the same time. But developer units are already available, and full schematics are published, full hardware source code are published. So this device uh, has a much lower cost. It's like $250, I think. Um, and can receive anything from 64 to 1 megahertz to 1.92 megahertz uh, with 4 megahertz bandwidth. Um, there's another project called RTL SDR, which also came out of Osmocom, um, which, uh, in which we repurpose existing DVT USB receivers that use a certain real-tech chipset. 
normally the USB TVPT receiver in this chipset, they will already do all the demodulation decoding and forward the MPEG 2 transport screen over USB. Um, but in this particular real tech chipset, you can disable all the demodulation and you can forward the raw ADC samples uh, over the USB 2 interface into the PC and basically use it as a generic software defined radio. And these devices in, in, in the West, you can buy them for $20 buy it even cheaper here. Um, and uh, you can uh, use the RTL SDR software and then again receive typically between 100 megahertz and uh, about 1.8 gigahertz is a typical frequency range. You can tune to any frequency and receive signals at uh, those frequencies. The sensitivity and the quality is not very high, but hey, it's extremely cheap. What, uh, what can we complain about? Um, there's another hardware that we've been working on what is called the SIM trace project uh, in which you can trace the communication between SIM card and mobile phone. So basically, normally when you put the SIM card inside the phone, you put uh, an adapter with a flexible cable and the real SIM card is inside this uh, SIM trace device and uh, you attach over USB to a PC and you can tap the communication between SIM card and uh, 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 phone. Also have uh, an E1 transceiver project, another, so all these projects are open hardware. You get the full schematics and everything online um, on the Osmo awesome project page. Yeah, uh, for for uh, tapping into E1 interfaces, uh, that's an ongoing project. We also have a project for uh, working on uh, the four network protocols, uh, like SS7, MAP, and so on, which are used in the four network of mobile operators. Um, all done in Erlang, so all the projects I've been talking about so far are all C language programs. So this is the only one that's the only family of Ponoco projects that's implemented in Erlang. Um, for specific reasons, I don't want to go there. Um, it's another talk. Um, we have many more projects. If you look at bitosmo.com org, um, then I, I just looked at it this morning. It's uh, 97. Uh, repositories that, uh, sorry, 79 Git repositories that we have publicly available, many different projects for many different areas uh, of mobile communications. And there's a couple of other non osmocom projects that I still like to uh, say a couple of words about. There's Open BTS, which is not really a BTS in the GSM sense, but it's a bridge between the DSM radio interface and uh, SIP voice telephony. It's a complete free software implementation uh, that you can run with uh, various different hardware devices such as the USRP or others. Um, there is airflow.org, which is a protocol analyzer, a sniffer for the GSM radio interface, um, but it's more or less abandoned uh, at this point. There's UMTRX, which is a uh, hardware implementation of a, a, a GSM transceiver um, as available as open hardware. Um, and there is XGoldMon. This is actually a very, very fun project. You don't need any new additional hardware. If you have one of these Samsung phones, Galaxy S2, Galaxy S3, Note 2, Nexus, then just by using the XGoldMon software, you can extract and forward all the layer 2 um, communication on the radio interface uh, from your phone over USB into your PC and into WireCard. And you see on a very low level all the GSM and WCDFA protocol messages that you receive or send um, uh, to the mobile communications network. It's a very interesting uh, um, project to look at, as I said, if, if you have a, a, a corresponding phone. You don't even need to install any app on your phone. It's completely, it's on, completely PC based, uh, no app required, uh, not, no modification. You don't even need to remove the phone. Um, Okay, well, where do we go from here? Um, people are working on various other projects. Uh, there's some work on GPS spoofing, GPS simulation. Um, there is work on, on uh, working with 3D base stations. Um, some people have been experimenting with interception of microwave uh, backholdings. Um, so there are many, many uh, activities going on. And I would just like to invite you to join us to contribute. I think TCP IP is boring, the internet is boring. Everyone works with it, everyone understands it come to something cool, something different, um, look into mobile communications. Um, okay, well, thanks for your attention, and uh, thanks to the many contributors to our Osmocom project. Um, if there are some questions, uh, feel free to ask them. Thank you.
but there are two different uh, source code bases that you can use on this open hardware um, to uh, operate the That's, uh, I would say, the, the uh, uh, most complete uh, device you can get if you want to have open hardware and open hardware. Uh,